think what's really disturbing about this is that they are essentially celebrating a form of self-harm. And it's very hard to think of, you know, any other group that, um, that this would be normalized for. It's, it's, it's really concerning. Um, it's glamorizing a, a serious mental illness. And it's something that we know is contagious as well. So if you look, um, if you look at the fact there's been a 5,000% increase in referrals uh, to, the, to the general identity services at the Tavistock Clinic over the past decade, clearly this is a massive issue um, with girls sort of hating their bodies. I mean, that's perfectly normal. Girls have always hated their bodies. It used to be self, you know, it used to be cutting, then it was anorexia, and there have always been these sort of social contagions that revolve around, around girls hating their bodies. But to normalise something as serious as cutting off your breast, that's a serious mental illness, body dysmorphia. That's not, um, you know, being inclusive of a marginalised identity. That's celebrating self-harm. And Joe, we're seeing an increasing uh, number of people coming forward and regretting their transition. Uh, so young women um, who feel railroaded into the process. Sometimes the you know they, they present to, to doctors and clinicians with uh, with uh, gender dysphoria, uh, but it's, it's it's mixed up with uh, autism, depression, various other mental illnesses, and uh, they're told that they can only have access to the therapy if they if they take the the path of transitioning, and if they're placed on uh, puberty blockers, uh, which are which are sold as something that just delays that, that are reversible and just delay the onset of puberty, but quite. Quite, uh, quite often have long-term irreversible effects and in some cases uh, you know, stunt the genitalia so there isn't enough material there to, to actually then properly transition. Uh, I mean, are, are you worried about you know, this could be storing up problems for the future and we could see this could be a medical crisis unfolding in front of our eyes? Yeah, absolutely. I think it will be, and it is, the biggest medical scandal of a generation. I think this will be looked at, back at in the same way as lobotomies and thalamidomide and all of those other horrendous practices that we now have, you know, moved away from. Um, and I think, moreover, when you look at um, who owns Costa, it's actually owned by Coca-Cola. Um, you know, they're not exactly a fluffy multinational, are they? I mean, if you, if you look at their record, I suspect they're factory workers in their bottling plants don't have time to think about their gender identity. Um, and I do think there's sort of an irony there. I think corporations keep pushing this agenda. We've seen it backfire for, for Bud Light, which, uh, which has lost hundreds of millions of dollars in sales, uh, sent its share price uh, into a tailspin. We've seen it with, with Target in America as well. In, in the UK, uh, Wix uh, received a lot of flack uh, over their uh, comments. I mean, wh why, did, why are corporations uh, pushing this? I mean, I think in part, a lot of them have signed up to sort of ESG style um, uh, schemes. So like the Stonewall scheme in the UK, where they get rated if they, if they sort of hit various targets. I think that's a part of it. I think another part is just it's just lazy virtue signaling. I think they know that they're going to get mobbed on social media if they don't sort of placate the trans nutters. So that's what they do. So they're actually doing it to because big big investment companies such as BlackRock or Vanguard say that you have to hit these uh, these environment these sort of um, woke investment points ESG environmental social and governmental. Uh, so you have to show that you're you're doing something uh, positive for for minorities, which in the in the end might not actually be that positive. And and do you think this uh, you know so the, the companies are pushing this agenda to get access to that funding, but then do you think they're they're uh, forgetting about what the actual customer base could actually care about and what their values could be. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I wrote an article earlier this week looking at um, newspapers like The Sun that used to promote page three. And, um, and actually, I think there's kind of weirdly a lot of symmetry between um, that being normalised and normalising the removal of breasts as well. I mean, you know, we now look back at, you know, 16-year-old Samantha Fox and go, oh, Jesus Christ, that was a bit wrong. And I think we will probably start looking at companies pushing this sort of nonsense with the same sort of horror in a few years' time.